Michael Maloney, the general manager of the Galway race course. Thanks very much for joining me. Now, you recently made an announcement that the very famous Galway race festival isn't going to go ahead as an open planned event, which would have happened end of July, start of August. Tell me why you had to make that decision. Well, it's something that uh, we've been looking at really for the, the last number of weeks and you know, obviously concerned about where we are in relation to the, the current situation for, for COVID-19. Um, uh, and I suppose uh, we're fortunate to have some medical people uh, on the board of Galway Race Committee as well. And we probably had taken the decision, you know, a couple of days previously that it, it, it was looking like uh, it was going to be difficult to have an event of the, the size and uh, the amount of people that the Galway Race Course uh, brings into Galway. Um, so we had kind of that decision made and then I suppose uh, on the Tuesday evening that we announced it, uh, the announcement came from uh, the government that events uh, of over 5,000 were going to be restricted uh, until the 31st of August. And I suppose we had seen also as well the likes of Germany and Norway introduce, introducing restrictions on mass gatherings uh, up until the end of August as well, which you know we also felt uh, we were likely to follow suit in, in Ireland. So. I suppose when that announcement came, it, it, it made our decision uh, a little bit easier, uh, but still very conscious, you know, of the huge number of people that it, it, it impacts uh, in terms of, you know, people that attend the races, suppliers, uh, businesses right around the city and county, you know, the, the festival itself is the last time we had a study done, it was worth 54 million uh, to the local city and county of Galway. So, you know, it's a huge blow uh, to the to the economy in Galway, but I suppose we all also have to be very mindful of the, the overriding factor of where we are and, and, and the, the loss of life that's, that's happening around the country and around the world at the moment. And, you know, I suppose that's a, a lot more important than anything. Gosh, I mean, that figure, 54 million, is huge, um, as you rightly said. It brings in an awful lot of money and business. Um, there is maybe a possibility, Michael, is there, that you might hold it as a closed event and then people could potentially watch it perhaps on television and, and possibly online. We work closely then with uh, Horse Race in Ireland there, who are the, the industry body uh, for Irish racing. And, you know, Irish racing was very lucky uh, at the early part of the restrictions. Uh, racing continued behind closed doors uh, for 10 days and uh, held about six or seven race meetings uh, through that period. Um, so, you know, a lot, an awful lot was learned in terms of how to operate a, a race meeting behind closed doors in a, in a socially distant fashion. And over those six or seven days, you know, improvements were being made every day as to, to how to operate it. Uh, and we've also had that uh, over the last number of weeks then uh, to review. So Horse Race in Ireland and, and the Irish Horse Racing Regulatory Authority have been reviewing those meetings uh, with a view to implementing some uh, further social distancing measures. So. Uh, Irish racing is, is pretty confident that we, you know, can get up and running and we can operate in a, in a socially distant uh, manner. Uh, and I suppose, you know, when you consider the, the huge number of people that are employed in, in racing in the Irish industry, uh, it's, it's somewhere in the region of 25,000 people are, are, are employed uh, by the horse racing industry. And I suppose that's something that we have to try and help and see, you know, if we can get it back up and running, obviously in, in a safe manner. And, and that's the, the big thing, you know, it has to be done safely with, with very little risk and you know if Irish racing is in a position to do that then we want to be to be part of that and, and facilitate the industry uh, I suppose the racing industry is something that has supported us and then indirectly supported the, the city and county uh, over the last 150 years we've been racing here since 1869 so you know I think all those people you know that make their livelihoods uh, from racing are, are under pressure right now uh, and if we're here to support them and if we can offer, you know, racing behind closed doors uh, so that they can continue to, to earn a living, uh, I think that's the, the right thing to do. And Galway Race Committee, which is now chaired by Mr. Anthony Ryan, uh, are very conscious of, you know, their need and ability to, to, to provide that support to the industry. So, you know, we are hopeful that we, we will be able to do it. <clears throat> uh, it'll be a very different event, uh, as you say, closed to the public, a uh, very private event with very small numbers of people uh you know it, it, it's it's operated on a <clears throat> it'll be operated on a, a real need and things like catering won't won't be happening on site but just um how can you have a whole load of jockeys on horses 
racing um normally they race very close together well the ones that might be all on the same sort of pace so how can you operate the required social distancing rules with a bunch of horses and jockeys all all racing for the winning line i think that's that's something that the irish horse racing uh, regulatory authority uh, will be looking at in in detail uh and you know that is certainly a concern and it's something that it's their responsibility to to review that and uh, provide measures uh, to to reduce that risk or also comply with the restrictions that the, the government introduce. Uh, so you know racing certainly isn't going to race uh, behind closed doors uh, if there's an area that we're not complying with the restrictions or uh, we, ha we haven't you know fully complied and I think we, we need to be in a position that we are fully complying or that the, the restrictions are so that uh, we're allowed to race in, in, in the manner that, that we need to race. But, um, you know, certainly right across the facilities, uh, outside of that, you know, you're out in the open uh, with huge space. Uh, so in terms of, you know, space provided for jockeys in changing rooms, et cetera, all race courses have, you know, large number of buildings and fixed space that we can uh, spread people out. And, you know, you're talking very low numbers of people, again, attending. and grooms, et cetera, that would travel with the horse are, um, you know, all will be very much distance and, and stable yards are, are quite big and, and, and you know, space is, is, is adequate, I think, to provide that, that socially distant uh, requirement. But of course, having it indoors is not at all the same as the regular Galway festival, the Galway races. We know that it's just such a huge part of the annual calendar here, Michael, in Galway. Um, what do you think from a sort of a cultural, a social point of view, will the loss of, of the real thing be now to the people of Galway and of course the thousands and tens of thousands of people who turn up from all over the country and outside every year to it? I think, you know, we probably haven't uh, realised yet the impact that it, it's going to have and you know, probably closer to the dates, uh, it, we will see the impact more and more. I think, you know, everybody around Galway, uh, a large number of people operate their year on, you know, something is on either before or after race week. And, you know, from, from now on and into May, June, uh, everything that happens in Galway is either before or after race week. Um, you know, but we obviously sit in with the, the other large number of festivals as well that, are, that, that sit either side of us and, and everyone works well and can make Galway a, a, a real attraction. But, you know, as you say, right down from <clears throat> people making milliners, uh, providing hats, you know, the uh, fashion houses providing uh, ladies wear and gents wear, uh, you know, right across hair salons, taxis, uh, hotels, you know, it, it, it's going to be a, a massive impact. And, you know, it really will be a, a huge hole in, in the cultural aspect of Galway City uh, starting the last Monday in July, which, you know, we normally ramp up to for five or six weeks before and everybody knows it's on and there's a huge number of events you know run right across the county that, that people attend even you know outside of the races but are are, are linked to the the races happening so you know i think it, it, it'll certainly be a you know a, a big hole uh, when we get to the end of july and you know people i think will will really feel it we're now already looking forward to 2021 and you know being a a, a bigger and better of our races and you know hopefully we'll be in a position that we'll be able to welcome everybody back to Bally Brish in, in, in a safe manner and uh, it's something that uh, I think we'll all have to just look forward to next year now. And if in the meantime you have to continue in a kind of with, with uh, very restrictive working practices with the social distancing rules applying and with the gatherings of over the 5,000, would you be able to keep going as an entity over the next 12 months if potentially you will be subject to fairly strict rules. Certainly, you know, we, we are in a, in a strong position uh, at the moment. Go Race Committee have, you know, always been uh, very conscious of, of, of the situation and have always managed uh, the races very well. Uh, so we're certainly in a, a very strong position to, to come through this year. Um, you know, like every other business, uh, we'll certainly uh, unfortunately have to cut some costs this year. and. You know, people will lose out from in employment to suppliers. Um, but I suppose it's it's part and parcel of, of the situation that, that we're in. Um, but certainly, we'll you know we're we're in a, a position to to be here and, and to be ready for 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 2021. Okay, Michael Maloney, thank you very much for joining us.